In an earlier video, I shared my experience shooting 360 degree images and video for the first time. This time around, I'll show you how to use those same 360 images to create an interaction in Adobe Captivate 2019. The concept is to create an interaction to help people pay more attention when leaving a hotel room so they don't leave anything behind. I have four images of the hotel room, the main room, the entryway, the bathroom, and the hallway. The learner will be able to look around and find information about the most commonly left items. So in Captivate, the first thing we have to do is decide what type of project we want. If we use a regular project, such as a blank project or a responsive project, we can add interactive 360 media as well as other types of content. But we can't enable it to work in virtual reality goggles if that's something we want to do. However, if we use a virtual reality project, we can publish it for virtual reality goggles, but we can't use other content types like a standard slide. Now, in this case, all we need are the interactive 360 degree videos, so a virtual reality project will work just fine. When I create it, notice that there isn't a place for me to indicate the size. It's a one size fits all scenario. The project opens up with one slide and I need four eventually so let me just duplicate those now and get all four. And then on each slide I click the button here in the middle to add my image. I'll start here with the bedroom image and then add the other three. Let's now go back to the first slide and let me zoom out a little bit so that we can see everything. And notice that here I can use my mouse to move around the image just like our learner will be able to. Whatever view I leave it at here in the authoring mode, that's the view that the learner will see when they first arrive on that slide. We'll worry about setting that up more towards the end. So now it's time for me to set up the interactive elements. I want to put in click to reveal markers that provide information about what to look for. So let's start with this book, which is one of the most commonly left behind items in a hotel room. To add an interactive hotspot, I click hotspots and then pick the icon I want. Here I'll click the exclamation point because these are really cautions and then I can reposition it where I want. Now notice it gets skewed, but once the view is oriented to that item, it looks normal again. So you don't need to worry about that part. I can reposition it, but I cannot resize it. Next in the properties panel, I will assign an action. And here I want to display text, and then I can paste my text right here in the panel. The text will appear as white text in a black pop-up. There are no formatting options for that. The pop-up will also disappear automatically based on the time that I enter right here. So you want to make sure you leave enough time for the learner to be able to read the information. It's really important to test that out as well to make sure you have the right length, not too short, not too long. So now I'll add another one over here. Uh, we'll put one right here. I'll go to hotspots again. I'll match this with the exclamation point and add my text. Add an action for display text and paste my text and adjust the timing. Now it's a little hard to tell what this is even referring to, but there's a ring here on the nightstand that will get its own pop-up and there's a laptop hidden under the pillow. So I want to provide a pop-up image that gives a closer in view of this. So I'll go to the hotspots for this and uh, let's see, I can maybe use the picture or I, you know, I'd rather use a, a magnifying glass. And I don't have that option, but I can add my own images here. So I made my own image in PowerPoint and I saved it as a PNG file. So that means I can go here to Hotspots, Image, 
And then find the image I created, which is a PNG file. Here's my magnifying glass. And there it is. Again, I can reposition it wherever I want. And this time in the Actions panel, I want to display an image. What image? Well, I'll go in and here I have this zoom in image that I created in Snagit. As with the text, there aren't any formatting options. I can't even adjust the size of the pop-up. But once again, I can change how long it stays up. So I'll change that to six seconds. I will be adding a few more text pop-ups, but let's move on to the next step, which is setting up the room-to-room -room navigation. So if I scroll on over here to the entryway, I want to add a button that takes them to the entryway picture. So once again, I don't really like any of the ones here for what I'm trying to do. So I created an arrow. It's a PNG file. And there's my arrow. Click open. And let me position it where I want it, right here in the middle of the hallway. And then over here in the Properties panel, I want my action to be to jump to a specific slide. In this case, slide number two is my entryway. I'd like to preview it, but remember that whatever I see here in edit mode is going to be the starting view from the student. So let me scroll this around because when they first load the interaction, I want it to look like they have just walked into the room. So now let me preview it and see how it works. Click play. And you can see that the view for the student is where I left off. When I click a button, the information pops up and it appears at the um, six seconds, I believe is what I set it for. And then I can go over here and I can view this one. It's also going to stay up for six seconds. And then I can click my image and it's going to give me the zoom in. And then I can go over here. I don't have to wait for that to disappear for me to move on. And then when I click on this, it's going to take me into the entryway. Now that's a little bit disorienting and it's now going to go through all the others because they're not set up yet, but we'll work on all of that. So to finish up this activity, I'll do the same thing for the other slides. I'll decide what I want my opening view to be. So this one might be a little tough because the student will be able to come in from the hallway, in which case this would be their view. They can come in from the bathroom, in which case this would be their view, or they can come in from the bedroom, in which case this would be their view. You can only pick one. So since they're most likely to come into the bedroom and then move into the entryway, and if you go from the bedroom to the entryway, this is the view that they'd start in. So from here, I can now add my various pop-ups. So for example, I'll end up with a little pop-up here about clothes in the closet, one about the safe. And then I would also add the various navigation buttons with my arrows. There's the arrow. Put one of those right here and then to go out into the hallway and then one here to go into the bathroom. Now once I'm done with this I can publish this to put it on a website to be viewed from a computer or on a mobile device. That would look very much like the sample we looked at a few minutes ago. And since this is a virtual reality project it can also be viewed with virtual reality goggles. Stay tuned for my next video on what this course would look like if you were looking at it with virtual reality goggles.